Hey guys, this is Tim Prinky, and this is my video on Skyslope, Zipform, and how to get the two platforms to play together nicely. I will say that this is an unofficial video. It's just one agent uh, helping other EXP agents, and uh, because that's what we do. So this is our main dashboard in Skyslope, and before we talk too much about that, let's uh, let's say that if you don't have a Zipform account then you need to set that up first thing. Most new agents don't have that already, so let's get that set up first. So we go over to ziplogics.com, and then we click on Products, and then we scroll down to Zipform Plus, and then we click on Buy Now. Click on I'm a Realtor, and then you'll select your state, and your association and then you'll just follow the prompts from there as far as setting up an account uh, you just get the basic free account you don't need to pay for any add-ons that's sufficient to uh, integrate with Skyslope okay so I've already got that account so I'm just going to go and log in so we can get started all right and while while that's logging in let's go back over to the Skyslope dashboards uh, in my opinion, there are two main things that you're doing in here. You're creating a listing or you are creating a transaction. You're representing the seller or you're representing the buyer. So create a listing is self-explanatory. You represent the, the seller and you need to create a listing for that particular property. Uh, it's always best to go and enter that data into the MLS first because then you can auto-populate from the MLS over to this listing, so just put in your MLS number and draw as much information as possible uh, so you don't have to enter it twice, okay? And then over here, we've got create a transaction. This is a little more confusing. This is when you represent the buyer and you only click on this button when you have, when you're ready to present an offer on a property. So you have sale contract in hand uh, or you're ready to submit a sale contract and you click on this. So where do you do all your preparation? Where do you, uh, get the docs signed, like buyer's agency agreement, uh, or if you're, it's a listing, where's your seller's disclosure, where's all that? Uh, that's all done through working documents and the integration through Zipform. So let's go back over to Zipform and we'll talk about that there. So uh, when my screen comes up, this is, I, I default to transactions. That's what comes up first. If you notice here, I've got one listing, that address, and then I've got four buyer clients. This is just the business I have going on right now. And uh, so whenever you do a new transaction, it will show up right here. Before we can do a transaction, we want to do templates because the template is what's going to feed into your transactions, the information that is used on a regular basis that you don't want uh, to have to enter again. And it will provide those documents that you use on a regular basis in one neat package. So in templates, I have two. I've got a buyer and a seller, and you can set up others. You can set up commercial, farm and land, um, condo one, whatever you want to set up. But these are the two main ones, and we're going to create one uh, as well, show you how to do that. So my buyer uh, template is right here and basically it's a collection of documents and forms that I use on a regular basis for every buyer client and I want to, I don't want to have to go and find them every time I just want them to auto populate and just come into my new transaction by clicking one button and uh, so that's what that's used for and I just put in these five forms you can really put in as many as you want uh, I've got a cover sheet which we'll talk about you need the cover sheet in every template and you want it in every transaction as well so that's why it's in here it will go into the transaction <clears throat> excuse me uh, I've got my buyer's agency agreement here I've got a residential sale contract I've got an inspection notice and then I've got my EXP wire fraud advisory. I know I'm going to use these five documents in every single buyer transaction. So I want to make sure that uh, those are in there. And then you can add anything else you want. You could add uh, counter offers or, or any other documents, uh, FHA, uh, Rider, if you want to add that in there. Uh, these are just the main ones I know that everybody is going to use. So I put them in here. So let's go and create one first, and then uh, I'll show you how, how it works. So let's go back over here, and I'm going to create a new template. I've got four choices. 
uh, listing. I represent the buyer. <clears throat> I represent the tenant or I represent the owner landlord. So I'm representing the buyer. So I want new purchase or offer. I need to put a name here. I'm going to call it buyer test. And the property type is residential. Like I said, you could set it up for farm and ranch, vacant land, commercial, whatever you want. This one's just residential. Uh, I leave this box checked for do not automatically apply this template. I want the option to select it uh, when I do my new transaction. So I just leave that do not automatically apply and hit save. And so I'm actually in the template. I've just got a blank canvas. I haven't imported any forms or documents yet. So we want to do that. Let's go over to add a doc. And now a form is a fillable document. So that's a, a document that has fields that we can type into. And so you want to use as many of those as possible. And when you can't find one, then you have to actually put in a document like a PDF. Um, but it's best to be able to fill those forms just by typing them in. Okay, so we can we can select from our computer, we can select from Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, or add a form. And those are in zip form. So I want to add a form. And if you notice here, this is my St. Louis Association of Realtors. That's my association. And these are all the documents that are available uh, through zip form for that particular association. And it's most of them. It's most of the ones that you need. Um, but when you first set up your zip forms, even though you integrate your association, it probably, your particular association, may not be the one on top. I know mine was not. And I'm going to show you how to see if you look here, these are all different associations. And uh, I really only want to focus on the SLAR like that. So I'm going to show you how to change that. So I'll go up here and click on me and then click on view profile and then click on forms. And here's that list of the libraries organize and SLAR was at the bottom, but I moved it to the top like that. And I'm done organizing and save and then close that. Okay. So we're back here again. Let's go back to add a doc. add form and then so I can scroll through here and pick my forms or I can just start typing a few letters cover and that's going to come up I put that in then I need a buyer's agency if I do buyer it's only going to give me a few buyers exclusive agency contract if I want a residential sale contract uh, that's right there and then I like to put in the inspection notice I know I'm going to Use that and then and that's it because that last one was a PDF and that's not going to be found in these forms and then uh, by the way if you just delete out anything in the search bar then all of these come back again and you can go through here and scroll and of course you see highlighted the ones that I have in there already okay so I need to go and add that PDF that I like to have in every uh, every uh, new transaction so I go back to add doc and this time browse from my computer for a document. It's right there, EXP wire fraud. I click open and OK. And now that's in there as well. So these are all my five documents that I want included for every new buyer transaction. So let's go back over, uh, let's see, back to templates. And uh, let's click into my buyer template that I've already set up. Okay, so the five, same five are here, but I've put some data into them to make my life easier. So this is my cover sheet. I don't want to put buyer information in because this is going to be used for all new buyers. So I don't want to enter one buyer, then that buyer will be in every new transaction. I don't want to enter seller information. The main thing I want to enter is my broker information right here. So, uh, once I've typed all of this in here, since I represent the buyer, I'm just, I need a selling broker. Uh, I never have to enter this information again. It is in there. And unless it changes, I never have to type it again, which is beautiful. Uh, down here is the listing broker information. So if I represent the seller, then I would want that broker information down here instead. 
Okay, and that's pretty much it other than I also include my title company here because I want that to go ahead and auto-populate too. It, so the question you ask yourself, will I use this more often than not? And if you're using this title company more often than not, then go ahead and put it in there. You can always replace it with a different title company in a particular client's transaction, but it's in there so that you don't have to type it in and you don't have to look up address or any of that stuff later. So it's already in there. I'm going to leave that in there. And you can do the same thing with uh, lenders if you always use the same lender or pretty much always use it then put that lender information in there already and then it'll auto populate all the time okay so let's get out of that <clears throat> and let's go and look at this buyer's exclusive agency contract uh, some things auto filled from the from the cover sheet and then other things i want to come in and enter myself so single family residence is is pretty much it's pretty common and that's what we're normally looking for so i go ahead and put that in there so that auto populates into every new transaction and then i can always change that if that's not what we're looking for i put my minimum uh, commission right there i like to fill in these forms or fields uh, instead of leaving them blank 120 and then i come down here and my uh, name here as the designated agent and that's going to be on every buyer agency agreement. And then I don't have any other agents who may be using, working on this business. Uh, so I put NA in all three of these. But if you had somebody that you normally um, work with that may be taking this client, then you want to put their information there. Okay. And then the broker information auto filled down here for me. So I didn't have to do that. All right. So let's go to our residential sale contract the same thing uh, I went and put some information this auto populated integrity and uh, contingent upon financing that is usually checked so I go ahead and check it now conventional and fixed rate is the most common for me so I'm going to go ahead and check those so that they'll auto, auto automatically be checked and I won't have to check them later integrity auto filled right here I uh, check this box for closing at X date and time, and we usually use an appraisal writer, so that's checked already too. Uh, buyer to order, provide, and purchase title, I already checked that. And then the rest of these, I don't like to leave them blank, so I just put the that number in there, 25 there, and then, and then 10, and 10, and 10, 15. All right, so that will already be in. I never have to put it in again. I can always change it if it's uh, different for a particular client. Okay, and then uh, buyer confirms that they've they've read the seller's disclosure. If that would not be the case, then I'll uncheck that box, of course, but it usually is the case. Uh, let's go down to the bottom, and you notice that the broker information and my state license ID and my MLS ID are all entered. Those auto-populated from that cover sheet, so those are all good to go. Um, so that's pretty much it. That's what our templates look like, and this is all kind of done the same way. So go into each one of these and just see if there's any uh, fields that you want filled for every single client pretty much the, again the question is more often than not then you go ahead and fill those in and then every time you add this template to a, a new client uh, all of that stuff will already be in there for you all right so the next thing we're going to do is go set up a transaction and that'll be on the next video